thank you for coming in. This is a, an, a, a first for me doing a Facebook Live, a Zoom, as well as Clubhouse. So we're doing multi-channels tonight. And the reason we're doing this tonight is basically to talk about the power of perfume and how people who've had anosmia have suffered greatly. Now, I just want to give a little introduction because David is a friend and David has actually suffered from anosmia and we're going to hear David's story and then we can hear Marianne's story and, and so on. I'm just going to put this here so I can press this. Oh, gosh. Okay. Um, perfect. So, everybody, our sense of smell is our most powerful sense. It's the one sense that connects memory and emotion. And we have a nice chart here. Uh, can we show the chart? Which actually shows you how our limbic system is so tied and so connected into our olfactory system. And our sense of smell is tied into uh, our emotions, memories, and I'll read this, hormones and, anti and um, automatic influence. So is this Laurie on the yes. end here? Yes. I think it's Laurie. So David. Yeah, I'm here. Hi. So David, I would love you to tell your story, what happened. And then Laurie, I'd love you to tell your story. Um, go ahead, David. Yeah, and I'm okay. so grateful to you for helping me deal with oh, not being able to smell. Hold on. Um, Wait one second. I want to record it. One second. Record. Recording in progress. Okay. David, talk nice and loud, please. Okay. Uh, there's a little message in front of me. I'm going to just push the message out of the way. Great. So I live in a, a northeast suburb of New York City called Western Massachusetts, and I have a beautiful organic garden, and where most of the food I eat comes from, and. Uh, a groundhog was eating my garden. So I got a have a heart trap, trap the groundhog as I'm taking somewhere to release it. Have a heart trap, the animal goes into the trap, and then the doors close. And if I put it, you know, I use this uh, lure watermelon, and they just always fall for that. So one morning I went outside, and instead of finding a groundhog in the trap, there was a skunk. Skunk. So I go, oh no, well, you know, what am I going to do? I can let the skunk go. And uh, to know that they shoot their spray by standing on their forelegs and they're upside down and and, and there's they need a certain height. And my trap was too constricted to allow for the stone to spray. So I went over to the trap and I pushed the door to open it up. And as I'm getting close to it, I see him turn around, get on his forelegs, lift up his tail. And I go, I, no, this isn't really happening. And shot from his anal pore, and it flew, went right into my, wow. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It was God. so horrible. I was throwing up for two days. And after that, I lost my sense of smell. I couldn't smell anything. And this has gone on for quite a while, uh, a couple of years. And then you and I talked about your work. Wait, you lost your sense of smell for a couple of years? Was it two, yeah. three, four, or five? Five. Five years. Five years. Okay. I lost it yeah, for five years. Okay. Yeah. How did you feel about that? Oh, horrible, especially because you know, I had such a, a great nose. You know, I, I had a you know, great ability to smell different smells, and my smell memory was perfect. I mean, yeah. I could close my eyes and smell a rose or, you know, from memory or a lilac or ylang Lang, right. or gardenia, cilantro, all of those things, I could smell it. I had really great memories from, you know, all the way back to the smell of my blue polyvinyl chloride bassinet that my parents drank. You know? So all of these things were, you know, I had to smell it, but when then I would go to the little botanical garden and I'd see the, the, the rose festival and I'd stick my face into the rose, Nothing. Nothing. And, you know, and we have lilacs and, I, you know, this bunch of, it almost looks like grapes. I stick my nose into the lilac blossom and nothing. And, and you know, really sad that, you know, that it wasn't changing. 
So then what happened? Then you and I talked and what happened? Yeah, then we talked and I tried your process of 18 different scents. And it was amazing because I smelled something in four of them. That was the first time I tried it. The second time I tried it, I had 10. The third time I tried it, I got all 18. And now what's happening is it's just the volume, the intensity of the smell is increasing. So, you know, where it's, it was feeble. But it was, you know, it was real. I could smell the leather. I could smell the vanilla. I could smell the rose and the citrus and the patchouli and all of those things. But faintly, but it's building up. So it feels like my scent memory is connecting to my, you know, receptors in my nose. And, and I'm excited, you know, I mean, if it stopped now, I would still be very grateful to you because it, I have some smell, but I'm, I'd like to keep working to see if I can get it back to full, full power. Well, you know, one of the things I will say to everybody, and I also want to welcome Tara Thompson here, Lady Rocket, Marianne, who's a client of mine, Wahid, and also Lori Gato, and I'd like you all to say something, and I'm so thrilled you're all here. This is the first time I'm doing a multi-channel Zoom, Clubhouse, Facebook group, and uh, something else. Let's see, from Marianne. Hi, Marianne. Yes, Marianne's talking in the chat. Uh, have you found out why? What does she say? Have you found out why? The incident. Cause why the incident would cause you to uh, I don't know why the skunk spray but he sprayed it in the mouth but he couldn't smell it that's for another discussion Marion but um, one of the things that I say to everybody is you know from the second we're born we smell and it's the one sense that connects us to our mothers so we go through life not even thinking about it because it's just so powerful and it's automatic it's an automatic response so we go through life, not even thinking about smell. And then one day, my goodness, what happens is one day it is taken from us, whether it's viral problems, car accidents, as we know, COVID. And so it's been just awful. So I am just so happy to help people. And what I have developed is my scent healing kit. And this is the scent healing kit, which has 18 perfumes. Now these are my perfume blends that I have created and they are perfume complex blends, not uh, essential oils. So David, I'm going to say thank you so much for coming in. Um, please stay on and people may have a question. Marianne, um, how hi, are you Marianne? You're looking great. How are you doing? Tell everybody your story. Um, well, I and I am a nurse. I work for Hospice of the Sacred Heart at the inpatient unit. And um, I was making breakfast for my family and couldn't smell the bacon. So that prompted me to go get tested for COVID and it came back positive. Um, I have lost my sense of smell. And I was with Sue on um, that June. Um, and she helped me get my smell back. You got very emotional, didn't you? <laughs> I did. Well, yes. guess what? I get emotional too when people can smell. It's amazing. Marianne, um, I want to ask David the same thing. Are you continuing to practice? And yes. You are, David. You yes. are for sure. Yes. And that's yeah, really I have important. my uh, my wicks here. <laughs> and uh, and the rest of the stuff is here. Okay, and uh, I'm working at getting it to be more and more intense each time. That's wonderful. And then, yeah. uh, Mary, what about you? Are you practicing? Um, actually, I'm, I may be a different Mary than what you're thinking of because <laughs> this is my first time, um, like being introduced to your products. Um, oh, this so is a different Mary. I was is... anxious to try to explore it and see if it'll help me. Um, my story is um, October of 2020. And I'm sorry, and you're, you're also Marianne? Yes, I'm Marianne. Oh, there was Marianne. We already had a Marianne. Marianne. So, okay, you're another Marianne. Hi, hey, nice to meet you. And you just came up because you heard about this. Uh, you saw this. Yes. Thank you for coming up. Where, where are you from, Marianne? And what's your story? 
I'm in Tampa, Florida. And um, October of 2020, I was diagnosed with COVID. And um, I woke up on my third day of COVID and I was diffusing oil to try to keep the house you know, clean and everything. I'm a big oil fan. Um, and I realized that I didn't smell my peppermint. I thought that was strange. And so um, I was eating some of the chicken noodle soup that day and realized that I could taste anything. And so it's been eight, almost 18 months now, and I have nothing. Sometimes I can taste salt, and for a little while I could taste lemon, um, but I got COVID again in January of this year. And what we'll little bit of taste or, you know, very few smells I would get, it's all gone again now. So I have nothing. So, um, Marian, please, um, I don't have your information. Please just send me your information in the chat or just email me. You can, all of you can email me to sue at suephillips.com. It's double L, sue at suephillips.com. And I just want you to know that... Um, so this is the scent kit. Now, I will tell you that when I did the scent kit to start with, um, my, and I, then I want to ask Lori. Lori, I, want to, I know you're waiting so patiently, Lori. Hi, Lori. How are you? We'll bring you on in a second. Hi. Um, Hi. You know, this started because I was writing my book, The Power of Perfume, and I wrote it over COVID. And NBC wanted to do a story about the book and then they called me the day before they said sue do you think you can help people with COVID regain their sense of smell with long haulers and i said well i don't know but i'll try and a young lady came in who'd actually lost her sense of smell for 13 months and i took her through the fragrance journey this is what she we met in person at my studio and i had the 18 blends and we went through all of them and she couldn't smell anything after the 13th one, she suddenly teared up and she looked at me and she said, I smell something and it's beautiful. And she started to cry. And I teared up too because I, this is very, very important and powerful for me. And then she could smell something and she really got very emotional. The caravan got emotional, NBC got emotional, and it started to go viral. And since then, I put the kit together and, you know, people like Marianne found me, uh, people like David found me, Lori found me here, Wahid. So, you know, here's the thing, guys. I've been in the fragrance industry for 40 years. I know the power of perfume. I also know that it is the one sense that is so powerful. It is our most powerful sense. It connects memory and emotion and smell and taste. And when you can't smell and you can't taste, it is miserable. You know, David couldn't smell for five years. He got skunked, so David didn't have COVID, but he actually lost his sense of smell because he was skunked by a, spray, a skunk spray. So <clears throat> it is terrible. And Marianne came, Marianne's a nurse, she works in hospice, and you know, she's been wonderful. She's been helping and, and really helping herself regain her sense of smell. Um, I'd like to ask Lori. So now, Lori, can we bring you Lori can turn on the volume. I can turn on the volume. Yeah. Okay. Lori, let's see. I'll turn on the volume. Um, I'd like to ask Lori. So now, Lori, yep. can we bring you Lori? Can you hear me, Lori? Lori, let's see. I'll turn on the volume. Um, I'd like to ask Lori. Hi. So now, there's, there's a bit of a delay, so just wait one second. Okay, so Laurie found me online and uh, I sent her the scent kit and I sent you the video link. So we didn't actually meet in person. <laughs> We didn't even do a Zoom session, but she got the scent kit and you actually got the Zoom uh, consultation, the link. Am I right, Lori? Yeah, that's cool. Yes, yes I can hear you. Can you, you hear yes. me? Hi, how are you? Nice to see you. Good, sorry. I, I was 
forgive my appearance. I was running children's sports. I wish sports. I could bring you up. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I can show you on the thing. But go ahead. People can hear you. So just tell your story and thank you for coming on. Okay. No, you're very welcome. I um, was diagnosed. Well, my whole family um, got COVID in November of 2020. Um, I our son's hockey teams uh, all got it and shared it with, I think, our entire team. Everybody got COVID. Oh, My yeah. husband was actually hospitalized. Um, but it was, I've had more of a problem than him, surprisingly, because I've had this long-lasting symptom. And he was in for four days. He didn't need oxygen or anything like that. His white blood cells went down. He got a Ooh. shot. They went up. He was fine. I, he, he was good. He's a very healthy person. We are all very active in our household. So um, anyway, uh, while I was, I did not think I had COVID because I didn't have a single symptom. And then one day, you know, I was drinking orange juice and it just in an instant, the orange juice tasted like water. So I said, okay, I guess um, I have, I have it now. I have, you know, symptoms. And my neighbor is actually a virologist that works on COVID every single day. And he was yelling at me from the yard, Lori, you really do have COVID. Cause I'm like, I don't have any symptoms. And he's like, you have COVID. So when I lost my taste and smell, he's like, I told you. And that was really the only thing that happened to me. I didn't have any other symptoms. So I think it really, and I feel like I've learned it from other people that when you have that as your only symptom, mm -hmm. it can really attack it. Like your body like takes that in and it just shuts it down yeah. and that's kind of where it ends. But it can last for a very long time. And a lot of people believe that they're recovered or they say that they're recovered, but they'll still say, yeah, I still can't smell coffee. What I've found that did I regain my sense of smell? I believe uh, over maybe a couple months, you know, intermittently, things were coming in slowly. It wasn't like it turned on and off. It was gradual. It was first I would smell salty or taste um, bitter, salty, sweet. That was the first thing that mm -hmm. started to come back. Okay. And then um, I realized, because I have lost my sense of taste and smell before from a medication. So for some reason, I have a propensity <laughs> to having it happen. So, and every time it's happened, it's come, it's been like a light switch where it turned on and off. Everything was back. It wasn't like this. So when I started tasting things and smelling things again, I thought, you know, everything, the lights had all turned back on, which was absolutely not the case. I could smell a lavender essential oil, but I couldn't smell bleach or something burning on the stove. So I started, I just started realizing that I wasn't a complete recovery, which I've realized with a lot of people, they just say they're yeah. recovered, but they truly aren't. Almost everyone I know will say, yeah, I have it all back. And I go, can you smell everything? And they're like, well, no, but they just, I would like to have well, a full recovery. here's the thing. How long has it been that you haven't been able to smell? How many months? Or is it almost a year or two now? I, I've been able to smell a lot of things for at least, you know, four months post-COVID. But I've, I've had what a lot of people on the yeah. forum call the come and goes. If I'm tested or stressed out, it goes. And I have no idea why that is. I wish they could figure out why. Um, I, I can understand inflammation. That makes sense. I mean, when you have a cold, that affects your smell and taste. But stress, I've heard other people as a trigger, that makes the smell and taste um, so, so diminish. here's, you know, look, guys, I'm not a doctor and I'm not a scientist, but I know the power of fragrance and I've been doing this for a long time. You know, I can only say to you, and David will be a testament to this, that, and I want to ask he to come in as well. Um, 
you know, when you think about exercise in your body, when we exercise and we're out there jogging or exercising or doing weights, we see the results. And if you stop exercising, your body's going to go back again. It's not going to be as firm. And so because you've had COVID, because you've had this inflammation, because you've had this problem, you have to constantly retrain your brain. You have to smell with your brain and you have to constantly it sounds like a real chore but you know i like to try and say make a game out of it go to the supermarket and when you're at shopping for things or going to the starbucks or going to the bakery or going to the supermarket go to the produce counter take a look at the oranges and the lemons and the limes and the tangerines and the grapefruits and maybe bring a whole bunch of them home and smell them blind because when you smell them blind, they all kind of smell together. All the citrus fragrances, all the citrus fruits kind of have a similar citrus smell. But when you look at them and you see and you connect the eyes and the smell, you can start to really train your brain. And I really believe that it's important once you've had COVID that you have to train your brain. And, you know, I'm working with, I'm very excited to tell you all that I'm working with um, Dr. Mila Emerald. She and I have just had our book um, accepted for publishing. And she's a neuroscientist. And she also has explained to me how important smelling with your brain is. And I'm very excited also through David and the connection. Uh, I can't announce it yet, but David knows what it is. We're going to be doing some clinical trials. Very important um, institution. So you have to really concentrate and train and smell with your brain. And Lori, um, you did the... Um, you, we didn't meet on on Zoom. You did. You got the scent kit, and then you did the scent consultation. How was that for you? Just getting the the video link and getting the consultation on Zoom. How was that for you? Oh, it was great. It was great. Um, when I first opened the kit, I smelled all the bottles just without the blotters, and I got really nervous yeah. because I didn't really smell them, and I'm like. My goodness, because I can smell my essential oils. That's what I had heard to train with initially was like, and I'm a big essential oil person for treating my kids with, you know, oils for right. instead of uh, medicines. So I'd use those and then I'm like, oh, perfumes and all the blends sounds like such like lifting the bar higher to try to distinguish between those notes as you describe the bottom notes the medium note and the top notes and really getting your brain to try to parse those out versus just knowing it's lavender or knowing it's eucalyptus, you know, really having the brain work to well, get you. them out. So, yeah, I think that is really um, an interesting way to um, try to train the brain. It's yeah. like, or complex puzzles. Um, thanks, Lori. I'm so happy to meet you. I'm so happy to meet you in person by Zoom and by Facebook. I want you to stay Same. in touch Same. and keep me posted with your um, with your journey. Did, did you fill out the olfactory questionnaire form? Great. Thank you. And we'll be in touch for sure. Hopefully you'll be in our clinical trials, okay? I'd be happy to. I mean, I'm, I have almost all of them. They kind of come and go like that's me. I'm a coming, <laughs> come and goer, but uh, there's four of them that I have left Terrific. to get. Well, thank you. you know, so great to well. see you. Thanks for coming in. David. Uh, thank you. Yeah, so I have a, uh, my experience is when I'm doing the work of working with the sense, first I read the name. Yeah. And then I access that part of my brain where there's a memory of that smell. And then the smell, I connected to that memory. And that seems to be what's making it more powerful for me. You know, first, I'm, I'm ideating on, you know, if it's, if it's rose or, or jasmine. And then I go, okay, jasmine's supposed to smell like this. And yeah. then I, when I smell the jasmine, I'm connecting the two. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to get back to you. Um, Wahid, hello, Wahid. How are you from California? Hi, Sue. How are you? Good. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming on. Wahid, tell us your story. 
Okay. Um, hello, everyone. I am. Um, I had problems with smell, and I mean, it's on and off, like everybody said. I wanted to confirm that, but the start is I read an article about Sue. It was, I think, it was on Yahoo or something, and then I was just on my couch, and I had this problem with smell for like almost two, three years. It was not related to COVID at all. It was before COVID. And I'm reading this article saying, wow, okay, let's try that. And I actually called her immediately. And it's funny enough, she responded the same night. Like, it was immediate. Uh, and we set, we set up an appointment. It was like two days later. And I went in. You know, there were no expectations. And we had this, um, you know, we, we had the whole experience where she shared with me all those different kind of uh, perfumes. And in the beginning, I really didn't smell anything. Like out of the whole, I, I must have been like maybe 20 plus, and maybe I recognized just something, not even close to figuring out what was it, but at least four I got. And I'm confirming <laughs> David because yeah, it was four. The, one, the first four, they hit me. Yeah. And, then, and then after that, we, we created the perfume out of the four. And again, just smelled vaguely something okay, like it's nice. And then the next morning, I guess, um, I'm not sure what happened, it just worked out. And then I'm trying to smell, and it smells much better and stronger. It's like, wow, this is nice. And I called it immediately. <laughs> I said, no, I was smelling this thing. It's like, whoa, it's amazing. And then it was very um, good experience. And, you know, so it, it does work, I think. Um, I read a lot about it, and I was, it was, like I said, before COVID, and I went through the medical channel, the normal channel, where um, I've seen so many ENT doctors, and, and in fact, I went to Heidelberg, Germany, uh, because they had this um, facility. It's amazing. I mean, we I met with good doctors. In, in Germany, they did tests uh, where they test, like, the airflow going in and out. That They don't do that in the U.S., and then... Um, I think they did, oh, they did actually uh, a smell test, like they put samples of stuff and they, they tell you what you smell and and then they put the results. So, so I think the conclusion is, yes, it's related to your mind and if you focus on it um, and use the exercise where you have something nice uh, that you can go and keep doing, it's it's going to click, you know. But I can I can relate, relate to the story where yeah, it doesn't go hundred percent back, and that's because I think it's complicated. It's very complicated. So it could be part of other things that you're going through. But I mean, I don't mind sharing with you other possible because I almost tried everything that I could, you know, to to, to get this back. But uh, this one, one, you know, the the, the smell or uh, the perfumes uh, was one of the, the the biggest one for me. So, and I ended up buying those perfumes. I love them. I wear them all the time. I ran out. I go and buy them again. So, it was just a great experience. And then we became friends because, you know, so so is, is she's very genuine, and she she really wanted to help people. So it's amazing. So. So we ended up being uh, good friends. But um, yeah, but I, on a side note, I can share that I've done some other stuff. Like, like for example, for me, and it's, shame, it's different for everybody, but for me, um, I did the same test that Sue was talking about, where you smell the fruits closely. And I do that all the time, especially if I be an orange or, you know, um, stuff like that. I get it close to my nose and I smell it. So yes, it, it works if you exercise it. And the reason, I think it's good to use something like a, a nice perfume because if you're doing one of those cheap, like rose water, whatever from Amazon, it's not that attractive, but this is something nice. You can like, you can reward yourself while you're getting better at it. So that's good. Um, like I said, on a side note, for other experience I used, I did a lot of stuff. I did acupuncture. I think it helped a little bit. Um, one of the things that I tried recent, and I, I'm not sure how that related. Again, I'm, I'm going to tell you, and you can try it, um, is if you left your feet up a little bit while you're sleeping, 
I think it does a little bit better where, you know, like your, your blood flow goes into your nose better. And just ever so slightly and try it for a couple of days, see if that helps. But, but definitely, thank you, Sue. That was amazing. And uh, the experience was amazing. So, yeah, thank you. Well, Wahid, I'm so happy to see you. Thank you. I know you're in California, and I really appreciate you taking the time. I think yeah. for me, uh, just having these kinds of affirmative testimonials uh, so all you all of you can hear from each other. Uh, I'm going to put a group together, and you can all be in touch with each other. I know that there's a Facebook COVID group, and I think Marianne um, came in, and some other people are here from that. Um, you know, as I said to you, I would be devastated without my sense of smell. I mean, it's my livelihood. It's what I do. Uh, I love art. I love food. I love music. I love the senses. Uh, and for me, the idea of not having your sense of smell is awful. Um, and so I, I share your pain and I share your, your, so much of your, your, all of you who are going through this stuff. So uh, I just want you to know that I, I really appreciate you coming in. Now, Wahid said something very interesting, and I've said this before. So there are essential oils. A lot of people think that you can go and get essential oils and that the essential oils will work. I know that doctors have prescribed acupuncture, steroids, MRIs, the burning orange thing. And guess what? How many of you have tried it and how many of you have realized that it doesn't work? Exactly. And so, very um, when you try essential oils, the truth of the matter is essential oils, you know, you can have essential oils in a little bit jar like this and it costs maybe nine dollars and you don't know what's in them because it's not really um it, they're not you can't really get quality of that kind of price and so you know the perfumes that i have created they're my perfumes that i've been using and created and i created these 12 years ago and they are beautiful perfume things and they're complex i think all of you who've tried them realize that they are complex that as David said, you know, you, so David's reading the, um, the description. So this is the little blend chart. So you can actually see the, the, the description and you can identify what they are. And maybe that will spur your memory to think about, oh, well, yeah, maybe it is rose, but maybe it's cognac and clove as well. So you start, your brain starts to work. And this is what I'm doing. You're training the brain. In fact, I keep on saying to everybody, we smell with our brain. And if you really have these complex fragrances, rather than a lemon or a coffee or a eucalyptus or a rose, you know, I like to say we live in a multi-sensory world. Everything that we have, we've got TVs on and videos and music and our, our lives are so bombarded with the sensory aspect that we have to challenge our brain all the time. And so suddenly with these fragrances, they are complex. And so I, I, I ask you and I, I really think that you're challenging your brain. For those of you who don't know, and I'm sure you all do know that anosmia is the complete loss of smell. So it's completely lost, anosmia. So hyposmia is a decreased sense of smell. Now, some of you who've had anosmia and who've gotten it back, as you said, and as I said, Laurie said, you, she's the come and go queen. <laughs> um, sometimes it comes back yeah. and sometimes it goes away. So if you have a decreased sense of smell, it's hyposmia. Parosmia is altered. It's when, like Laurie said, she's tried the orange juice, but she tasted water. Some of you are tasting certain things, excuse me, or, um, smelling certain things but instead of having the neuro pathways go directly from here to the brain they're getting crisscrossed so perhaps you're drinking coffee but you're tasting something else or perhaps you're eating um pasta with garlic and maybe you're smelling something awful very different so that is a when you get a an altered sense of smell but when you have parosmia, I think that there is still a, there's a sense of hope because you are smelling something. 
So then what I suggest you do is you train and smell with your brain because if you have parosmia, at least you're smelling and you have to just make sure that you can try and concentrate and focus and get back the proper sense of smell. Now, phantasmia, oh gosh, phantasmia is when you're sitting here doing nothing and suddenly you smell a phantom scent. You could be sitting right here and suddenly you can be smelling I don't know, smoke, and there's no smoke, or you can be smelling something putrid, like rotting flesh, and it's not here. So that is called um, phantasmia. How many of you have had phantasmia? Anybody? No? Marianne, no? You know, um, no, I don't think I have. Good, okay. Um, and Marianne to everyone, the other Marianne said she's had it twice. So that's pretty scary when you've had phantasmia. Um, so diosmia is distorted sense of smell, including parosmia and, and <laughs> phantasmia. So that's when it's really all distorted. And then when you have the sense of taste coming in, it's called dysgasia. It's an altered sense of taste. And oft, oftentimes it results in the perception that you might be eating food that is should be tasting fine but it smells sour or it smells metallic or it smells rotten so it's so amazing that all of these disorders the smell and the taste disorders can really wreak havoc with your lives and as i said i'm not a doctor and i'm not a scientist but i've had right now guys i'm so excited to tell you i've helped maybe almost over 100 people just since last in May and June, I met I met Marianne Bennett in. She came to the studio in June, so this is just you know six eight months ago. Yeah. So um, you know, I really urge you all to please continue to practice, to continue to smell with your brain. I'm always here for you. I'm available if anybody wants to ask any questions or just chat to me or send me a. A text message you all I think have my a thousand emails from me <laughs> I don't stop but um, does anybody have any questions uh, wait somebody's coming into the room Molly let's see oh there's Molly uh, let's see is that Molly and there's Joe hello Joe hello Frank Hello, Dee. Oh, my gosh. Look at all these people here. Hello. Thank you all for coming, everybody. Um, let's see if I can see the um, gallery view to see who's here. So we have David. We have Marianne Bennett. We have Tara. Hello. And Marianne with the new Marianne. I don't know your last name, Marianne. It's Cox. Marianne Cox. Right. Thank you for coming. Uh -huh. We have Waheed. We have Dee Wilkins. We have Joe coming in. We have Frank and Crystal Welch, Molly, and then on, on my iPad, um, we have Lori. Um, so does anybody have any question? Are there any questions? Uh, I, I just want to repeat what a few other people have said and how emotionally moving it is to have the experience of not smelling and then all of a sudden you're smelling you know for me again it was five years of not smelling yes, and yes. the first scent that i smelled of yours was honeydew melon yeah. you know and it was such a like hello i remember <laughs> you <And> so <laughs> david excuse me you not sad. Sad. on your loss of smell i'm sorry what did you say what what caused your loss of smell <laughs> i got skunked a skunk shot its load into my mouth oh and i lost my i after throwing up for a few days i lost my completely lost my sense of smell oh. and uh and you know and i was you know surprised by it even because you know i could pick a rose and it would just be a perfect rose with dew on it and i would hold it up to myself knowing i was going to smell this fantastic rose <laughs> nothing about is other people Zero. also lost their oh, smell boy. Uh, so Molly is was that is that Molly Molly Vovo is that you Molly? My daughter just came in the room. <laughs> yeah, it's me. Hello, Molly. Oh, it's so lovely to see you. Thank you for coming. So uh, Molly, tell everybody your story. What happened? I know it was your birthday. You came in, right? Uh, yeah, I came in um, on my birthday. I had COVID um, exactly a year ago. 
today mm. and lost my smell. And I did come to Sue and we sat down and we, and I smelled all the perfumes and it was honestly the first time I was able to really smell, but again, it, it comes and goes and now it's completely gone again. So I'm hoping I can get it back soon, but it's not easy. It's not easy, but you know, as I tell everybody, I hate to be a preacher, but you guys have got to practice. Honestly, look, I am, if, if I don't work out, I feel yucky. And it's really working out with your nose. You know, as soon as you've lost your sense of smell, your brain says, ha ha, I've won. I'm the boss of you. And we have got to change it. You've got to go back and practice. And you've got to change the, 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 the metrics. And, and you've got to get in touch with your brain. And you've got to make sure that you are the boss of your brain. I know that sounds terribly simplistic. And it's really being infantile saying that. But the truth is, with concentration and with focus. And if you just practice even three times a day, you know, you go to the, go to the fridge in the morning and see what's there and just pick up an orange or pick up an apple. And before you bite it, just focus and concentrate and see if you can try some of the herbs and some of the products. Uh -huh. I will definitely, you know, more right and I can get my smell back like everybody else I'm so happy to see you Molly thank you for coming um I don't know D D um thank you for coming would you like to say anything D Wilkins no you don't have to J yes go ahead Frank well I've I lost a, a, a hearing in one ear about four years ago so I've been having to adjust to that reality, but I'm, my taste and smell are very good, <laughs> fortunately. Oh, that's good. But, but, but what I have learned about uh, smell, I learned from my dad because he had an industrial accident and fractured his skull Ooh. and lost his sense of smell and his sense of taste, both. And he wrote a lot. I still have his original handwritten notes. He was undereducated, uh, but very smart. In any case, he wrote a lot about losing the sense of smell in particular. And he pointed out that your sense of smell is so closely associated with your sense of taste. Right. So you when you're about to eat something, when you bring something to your mouth to eat, you smell it first. And I, maybe I can find that and copy it and mail it to you. Uh, I would love that. Oh. It's been so many years ago. He died in 1988. It's been quite a while ago. Yeah. Um, I would love that, Frank. Please, um, you know, in fact, we'll put my information in the chat. But, you know, look, here's, here's a very simple diagram. And you can see how when we inhale something from the rose, it goes straight into the olfactory and the nasal passages here. And it weaves its way into the olfactive, and it's so connected. It's so connected. Our sense of smell and sense of taste are very connected. And so the other thing is, it's also very connected to our memory. And that is why our sense of smell is our most powerful. You know why? Because when you smell something, it triggers a memory. And it can trigger a memory from a past association. You know, I'm from South Africa, and I will tell you that there are times in New York City, especially in the, uh, the change of season, spring and summer and winter and autumn, especially in spring and, and autumn, I can walk down the street and suddenly I smell something that takes me right back to South Africa. Now, I've lived in New York for 44 years, but that sense of smell is so powerful. I'm a little girl smelling my back door, my uh, back, my garden outside, and the acacia trees and, and the, the oak trees and just my mother's cooking. And oh my God, it is so powerful. I literally stop dead in my tracks. And so <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's, you might want to, you might want to mute yourself because I can hear you and the doggy. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. So it's just very, very powerful that, you know, our sense of smell is so tied into our sense of taste and our memory. Um, I wanted, does anybody have any questions? Because I just wanted to um, 
say some other things. So I've, I'm very grateful and very excited that people are coming in to talk about this. I want to do this more and more often. Uh, I am on some Facebook COVID groups. Um, there are some 45,000 people, some 12,000. Uh, some people are really, really angry. They're upset. They're frustrated. They've given up. Some people have put on 40 and 50 pounds because they want to eat, 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 and try and get back their sense of smell and taste, and they can't, so they just keep on eating. And they land up feeling awful because they put on weight. And then the converse is true. Some people just lose all interest in food, all interest in smell, all interest in everything. And they've lost 40 and 50 pounds. I had a young woman, Jalen. She actually had lost 30 pounds. She's a young girl of 16. She can't afford to lose 30 pounds. And she was absolutely miserable. Her mom brought her in. They found out about me. It was a miracle. And, you know, when, when people have these breakthroughs, it's just it's wonderful it's 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 so empowering um the other thing is when you lose your sense of smell you lose you don't want to socialize because everything revolves around food and social occasions and let's meet celebration with our friends our family and you know when you can't partake of it you just feel why bother i don't want to do that and so marion is this very emotional for you it's so tell, it's so tell, tell me, yeah, tell me what you're thinking, Marianne. Just like hearing you say that how it triggers memories and stuff. And it's funny because I lost it in October of 2020. And in November, um, we bought a new car. And a couple weeks ago, I went to pick my mom up to go to lunch. And she got the car and she said, oh, your car still has that new car smell. Uh, and I said, I've never smelled that, like. My smell was That's gone before we bought it, so I've never got to experience that, you know, and it's just, it's difficult. People don't realize um, I've been the one to gain weight. It's really weird. I can't eat any meat. Um, I basically became a vegetarian after this. Just the thought of meat, like, m makes me nauseous, um, and so I eat a lot of pasta. I eat a lot of bread because... I can't taste it, but that's all I want. Yeah. You know, it's just, I don't know, it's so depressing. It really is. Well, listen, everybody, um, you know, I, I get it. I think we all get it on this, on this chat and on this, uh, on this um, session. And I'm, I'm very happy that uh, I can do this for you and I want to do it. And please reach out to me. Um, uh, and I wanted to, I don't know if any of you want to get the scent kit. I mean, there's certainly no obligation, but, I will tell you that it really helps. I know David has it, uh, Wahid had it, I think Molly has it, um, certainly Laurie has it, because you need something to practice with. So we we're actually putting this on tonight and um, I also have a video link. So when people meet with me in person, um, I do an in-person consultation. We can also do a Zoom consultation. If you just wanted to do it on your own, you could get the kit and you could just get the link. And I'm making it very affordable because I really want to do that. I have my own, uh, I do have, you know, expenses that I have to make cover. So the scent kit normally is, uh, what is it, Kim? <laughs> normally it's 350 and the link is about 150 But tonight we're doing everything for 295 The scent kit and the video link. If you want the video link on its own, with the send kit, you can have it. And uh, I'm happy to do that because it's really important to me that you have the tools to try and get back your sense of smell. I'd and just like to add, it's, it's really fun too. It's really fun <laughs> to do. And they're not just all like the flowers. So the first scent that I smelled from the kit was a honeydew melon. The second was vanilla. The third was leather. So if you're looking for that, use that new car smell, the, the leather one is just, so fabulous. Anyway, so, you'll enjoy yeah. it. So these are them. Um, they're the little, and we, we also have the blotter strips that come with them. And they are fun. And uh, they are really high quality perfume. So you can see this one is the, uh, this is the number three, which is the aldehydic. 
and you can see the different colors. Some are very clear and some are deeper and darker. We have citrus. Yeah, she's big. What's that? The ones that she has right in here, these are her clients. Oh, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, say that again, D. Uh, I was, I'm sorry. I was just so enamored by all of your, your awesome work and, and the, 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 um, you know, the different perfumes yeah. and how important they are, how significant, right. This particular package. And I was explaining to my pastor about everything that you do. Well, thank I'm you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, I'm, ha I'm so happy to hear from you. Um, thank you very much for coming in D. We have not met. How did you hear about this? Are you from zoom or from Facebook group or, or how did you hear about this um, I have the link. Uh, I'm from Facebook, okay. the Facebook. And so there, I'm sure that the rest, everybody, good evening, everybody. Um, um, I did. And I'm in Florida, which is, which is awesome also. But you, you are such a, a, a very humble and kind lady. And because of the COVID, you know, the, that was what intrigued me the most, that you were able to to because of your your program, uh, the individuals they they gain back their sense of smell. I mean, my goodness, we all know how so important it is to have uh, the sense of smell and taste. And by following uh, your program and the sense that you have, I mean, I, I thought it was phenomenal. That's why I wanted to make sure that I met you <laughs> and that you. I interview you also. Oh. So I'm terribly sorry, everybody. I didn't mean to unmute. I, I hit the wrong button. <laughs> Don't be silly. I'm so thrilled. It's so lovely to see a face behind the name. So I'm delighted that you came in and I really thank you. Um, so I know we're going to be probably heading off soon. But I wanted to show you something all that um, why did I have the fragrances that I have? So these perfumes that I have, these um, on here, this is sort of the blend chart. These tell you the, the, the notes and the expressions. But, you know, in perfumery, there are eight main families. And these are the families that absolutely bring joy to, to us throughout, during our lives. And... For instance, we have the citrus. So what is involved in citrus? So you can see the orange here, but it's not, it's more than just orange. It's lemon, lime, orange, grapefruit, tangerine, um, mandarin. So all those lovely, bright, delicious citrusy notes. Now, those are really called top notes and they're very effervescent and very sparkling. And, you know, a lot of times people can't smell very light notes so what we do is all of my fragrances in the kit span this entire olfactive palette. So we have the citrus, then we have the florals. I have a beautiful rose, uh, exotic modern rose. I have a, a jasmine, uh, um, gorgeous, very sensual and sexy gardenia, uh, as well as frangipani. And so these are not just for women, they are for everybody and even Though you may think rose and flowers are only for men. No, it's for everybody. So the citrus, the flower, then we have the fruitiness. And this is what David was referring to. In my fruity fragrance, I have the honeydew, the berries, pomegranate, just luscious, edible fruitiness. They really make you want to uh, love to eat them. Then we have the oriental. So the oriental family is really what all the spice notes are from. So think about what's in your spice cabinet. In your spice cabinet, I'm sure you have cumin, coriander, nutmeg, cinnamon, um, what else, ginger, all those wonderful, delicious, spicy notes. And when you try my spice fragrance, which is my number 10, there's my number 10, this one, there's number 10. The number 10 is like sitting at a fireplace, drinking mulled wine, and just having that beautiful aroma of this fireplace, the mulled wine, sitting with a, either yourself with a good book or with a loved one, with a blanket. It just conjures up all those wonderful memories. So then we have the chypre. So this is the other note that David was talking about, the leathery note. It's got patchouli notes, 
leathery notes, oak moss. It's very deep, it's very dark. It's like a beautiful enchanted forest. I happen to love it because I happen to like these very bold fragrances, but each of these fragrances in here are complex. Then we go into this, the woodsy family and that has my fabulous sandalwood, which is number 11. Sandalwood, my sandalwood is actually from uh, India. It's a beautiful, smooth, creamy, very sensual sandalwood. And then we have the herbaceous note. This is what, what lavender is from. And lavender, as you know, many of you, is a fragrance that can really help you get calm and feel relaxed. And sometimes it's used a lot in men's fragrances. And then finally, the fragrance family comes from animals. We don't use anything from animals anymore, but in the olden days, they used to use animal musk from the deer and the civet cat. And, you know, I will say that perfumers have been looking for interesting ingredients for centuries. And they, they walk, go around the oceans and the forests and the cities looking for interesting ingredients. So the deer and the civet cat make musk. How, or when they get a little frisky and they get a little sexy, shall we say, they make musk. How or why those perfumers found it, we're not gonna go there. But anyway, we don't use anything from real animals anymore because we have a lot of um, FDA rules and EU, European Union. But anyway, so the 18 blends that I've created which are my perfumes, my own proprietary perfumes, which are complex and they're beautiful, span the entire olfactive palette. So let's say, for instance, you're interested in trying a citrus with a fruity or a floral or a spicy or a woodsy or a sheep, but you can try any of these. And the reason I did that was because I wanted to have enough of a variety, enough of a range. Hi, Lady Rocket. Hi, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Welcome, welcome. Wonderful to see you. L listening to to your uh, artistic expression <laughs> of fragrance. That's thank you. beautiful. Thank you, thank you. So this is what I do, everybody. Um, and I wrote my book called The Power of Perfume, which really is, um, it's my homage, if you will, to perfume. And I did this during COVID before I even started to work with people who had lost a sense of smell. And I just call it the power of perfume because that's actually what it is. It's the power of perfume. So I wanted just to share with you that uh, if you like this tonight, let me know. I would be happy to do it again and again. I want you all to enjoy the beauty and the magic and the mystery of fragrance and to get your sense of smell back. And um, I would be so delighted to hear from you. And if you're interested in more uh, of these kinds of interactive experiences, I would love to hear from you and I'd love to have you come on. So David, what do you think? Thank you, this was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for convening this. Thank it was really you. great to hear everybody talk about their journeys. With with no smell, it is uh, sc scary and lonely not being able to smell. Yeah, that's true. Scary and lonely. Well, you have me, guys. You have me, the the thank fragrance you, queen. Thank you so. Thank, thank you, Frank. Thank you, Frank. Thanks, I just want to mention at the end, yeah. if I may conclude. Yes, please. Uh, for, for a moment. Yes. Uh, although I not lost uh, my smell. But I can speak to the loss of smell in a big segment of our American society. I, I had to drop out of our meeting because I am participating in Silicon Valley and Los Angeles uh, Venture Capital Technology meeting. And I realized so that we are, there's no smell uh, in, uh, in key parts of our society, like Silicon Valley. Right doesn't have a sense of smell and that smell it's not only important to all of us the way that you presented it but i think smell is a, a sensual expression of the self-identity yes so critically mm -hmm. important 
in the times of peril challenges, uh, also times when we have to express our identity and a contact with you made me realize, made me realize, brought back memories. When I came to the United States and I was a graduate student and had to deal with a lot of challenges, That's I remember the tougher going was in my life, I always went and bought the best perfumes as the fastest fixer upper <laughs> for the sense of identity, personal courage, self empowerment, identity, and this is probably the most beautiful fast fix. And so, as you know, we are discussing about perfumes and space and moon. And uh, I was inspired that, you know, space doesn't smell. And this is why creation of the perfumes that would capture the fascination with space, presence of billionaires in space, and then add to it something that's completely missing in all of it. Uh, it's a very interesting journey. Well, you know, so, you know, Lady Rocket, um, first of all, thank you for coming in. And I just want to say, you know, to, to these most of these are my my friends and my clients and my colleagues now who have really created and, and have uh, regained their sense of smell and we've helped them. And Laurie's here on on Facebook and Wahid and Marion and David yes. and Mahi, you're all on here. But, you know, my journey about fragrance really started in in the cosmetic industry with big brands, Elizabeth Arden and Lancome and Tiffany. But then I started doing consulting. And then, you know, there's been so many, should I say, um, reinventions. You know, in 2008, when the economy crashed, people weren't interested in fragrance. They weren't interested in things. And so my business came to a standstill and I thought, well, what do I do? And I started to think about customization. So customization was, people said, well, you know, what are you doing? Tupperware parties for perfume. And now people really want to reflect their individuality, their personality. And really people want to become a brand. And we're all on Clubhouse or Instagram or Facebook or Zoom or just talking and how we look and how we smell and how we are reflects our own personality and our own persona. And that fragrance is one of the most important aspects of building a brand. Because when you walk down the street and you have that sillage, people say, what are you wearing? So fragrance is not only just for our own enjoyment, but it's also really to help determine our own personality and our own pers persona. So I'm glad that you felt that, that you realize how important our sense of smell is because you're right, in Silicon Valley, everything is sort of very amoebic, it's very neutral. And you wanna add some kind of interesting dimension to yes. your life. And technology also lacks smell. This is why being an artist of technology who is using technology to build enterprises, to go to the moon and to create new economic platform, I, I see that there is an opportunity to, to steward uh, a unique uh, perfume brand, right. to steward a unique role of, of perfumes in our lives, which, which uh, I think uh, the only challenge is, you know, the uh, well, I don't want to bring that to our discussion. Right, I, I know, know what you mean. We'll talk about that later. Right. Yes. But anyway, beautiful to meet your friends. I was at the beginning of your session. It's beautiful, inspiring stories. Thank you. I just want to say hello to everybody and thank you for the invitation. Wonderful. And, and thank you. And congratulations. Uh, Lady Rocket just had a brand new little launch. She had a little brand new great baby grandson. So congratulations. Oh, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, thank you for thank coming. You, thank you so much, Lady Rocket Ava. Molly, thank you for coming. Continue to smell well, darling. And Wahid. Sorry, I came in late. I was coming back from dance rehearsal. <laughs> but you came. You were here anyway. Thank you. But thank you. Nice to know that I'm not alone. Yes, absolutely. And please, all of you, you could, you have a, you have a platform. I'm happy to have you. And Dee, thank you for coming in. And Frank, you too. And Tara, I know you're on your way to. Europe, so have a great trip, and Marianne Bennett, and Laurie, to you, my friend, I'm so happy to see you, and thank you for coming in, and I, I really appreciate thank you all, so I just stay in touch, and I'll be in touch with all of you, and I send you good wishes, my love, my 
best Thank fragrant you. wishes to you all. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye, Thanks a lot. Thank Take you. care. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. Bye. <laughs> bye bye.